Hey guys, and welcome to the one where I talk about portfolio sites and am bad at pouring coffee. So I have more than a couple videos about how to get a job as a web developer. They're pretty much all my most popular videos. And one thing that I talk about a lot in them is portfolio sites. And then I don't really talk about portfolio sites in detail ever. So that's what I want to do with this video and give you kind of a step-by-step -step breakdown of what should be in them, what you should do with them, and why you should definitely always have one. So what is usually one of the most important things that people are looking for when they're trying to hire a developer? It's experience, and you're trying to get your first job as a developer, so you don't have any, right? Wrong, and that's where your portfolio site comes in, and this is why it's the most important thing there is. You do have experience developing things. You may have just not gotten paid for it yet. So what do you want to include on your portfolio to make sure that you're using it to maximize your potential of possibly getting a job? Well, there are four main things that you definitely want to have on every portfolio site ever. As far as the layout of your portfolio site, that's really going to be up to you, which you put first, last, second, third, it can really depend. Just make sure that it's very clear to navigate to each one of the sections and there's nothing really blocking someone from getting somewhere clearly and effectively. If it's going to be a website that you're presenting to people and you're trying to make their website, make sure it's clear and modern and can fit on every screen size. But as far as actual content on the portfolio site, you want to have a little bit about you on there. Make sure that they know that you're not a robot. Show off a little bit of your personality, maybe include a picture if you want to. Number two on your portfolio site, you're going to want to have your resume. You want to have your resume everywhere. You want it on your LinkedIn, anywhere else that you're going to be applying for jobs. Indeed, um, if you're applying for jobs on Facebook or Stack Overflow, make sure that your resume is there. That is like, I don't know, I can't think of the word. It's literally the most important thing to HR people. It like is there like crack, I don't know. Make sure your resume is on your portfolio. Make sure it's a PDF so it's easily downloadable and easily printable. You can make a really cool HTML resume, but if they download it, make them download it in a PDF format because not everybody who's going to be downloading that uh, resume is going to know about like tech and they may download an HTML file and be really confused by it. Now the next bit of information that you're going to want to have on your portfolio site, your resume should have on it as well, but you're going to want to make this on your portfolio site separate from your resume, and that's your contact information. Now your contact information can include your email, your phone number, your LinkedIn profile, your Twitter profile, your Facebook profile, your old MySpace profile, a live journal you had from 2005, but what I would suggest is if you're going to add in your social media links, especially anything other than LinkedIn where like 95% of people keep it super professional, be careful and don't do anything really stupid on there for a long time and yeah don't make it easy for somebody to think about you in a negative way when you're applying for your first job if you tweet about basketball and you're really angry about it because I don't know your Washington Wizards just lost or whatever it is maybe don't put your Twitter on there I, I know it shows personality but it can also be negative and you're just trying to get your first job so I would maybe shy away from that all right and last and totally not least because this is the number one question that I get when it comes to portfolio sites is projects yes projects 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 you need to have real live functioning things that are like working and deployed to the internet on your portfolio site and you're going to link to them in their deployed state somewhere else on Heroku or Firebase or whatever you choose to deploy on and they're going to be sweet. Now the question is always not whether or not you should put projects on your portfolio site, that's a given, but what kind of projects, how many, how do I know when they're good enough, and those are all really hard questions to ask. I can tell you from experience what I did, I had two projects on my portfolio site. It was my final project and a storefront like e-commerce platform. Those two things were both very robust. So while I only had two projects on there, my final project was an Angular One app with a Rails backend that used a Rails 5 action cable web socket um, to connect the front end and back end. We were making API calls, we were doing validation. Um, it was a fully functioning web app that was deployed live to the internet. So it was a pretty robust thing. And that was kind of the crown jewel uh, for my ex work experience up until that point. And then my second project that was on there was a storefront that we made and it had authentication, login, logout, um, 
third-party API calls, a cart feature, which you could check out with, um, and PayPal integration. So it was also a very like robust app that we built. So two projects was good for me. Now, not everybody is going to have that same amount of work in two single projects, but you probably have the same amount of work in four or five or six projects and it's no problem whatsoever to throw them all up there. If you're proud of it, if it's something that you said wow when you built it, put it on there. It's also okay to show growth on your portfolio. You can have your newest project at the top and your oldest project at the bottom as long as your oldest project works, it's just simple, and your newest project works and it's more advanced, that shows a path of you growing. There's no problem with that. I would say as a bare minimum, you should put two projects on your portfolio site. At a maximum, probably six to eight, although if you've done a ton of work that's like freelance work, I would put a lot of that on there. If you're getting paid to do it, or if you're contributing to open source, then I would put that on there. If you're putting like 10 or 15 projects that are all Team Treehouse projects or that are all Udemy course projects, I don't know that you need 10 to 15 of those. I, and I would think about maybe building something on your own that's independent of that and putting that on your portfolio along with maybe one or two of the Team Treehouse or Udemy projects on there. Now when including the projects, what I did on my personal portfolio site is I had a little screen cap of them and then had a small description with what they were built with, how we built them, and then a link to their deployed state and a link to their specific GitHub repo. And that way a potential employer could go and mess around with it live on the internet, they could download the code and mess around with it there locally on their machine and they'd have a pretty good idea of how I coded at that point in my career. I hope this was a helpful video for you guys about portfolio sites and stuff like that. I personally have taken down my portfolio site. I did it right after I got a job because I was never happy with it, but then I got a job, so it worked, but then I took it down because it's no longer up to date and I've moved and yeah, it's just not, up to date anymore, so I took it down. If you guys have any questions about your own portfolio site, feel free to leave them down in the comments below. I would love to get back to you and try to help you out and take a peek at them if you have something already up. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, feel free to hit that like button because they're super awesome and they make me smile. And if you want to keep following along in the journey, feel free to hit that subscribe button down below. That is also super awesome. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day and I will see you guys at Shit, I almost did that one like really well all the way through and then I messed it up. I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your day and I will see you again very soon. Bye.